In the previous video, we talked about why functional safety is an important consideration when designing FPGA-based systems. This video chapter answers the question of how and where to implement functional safety on the FPGA. It's vital to know exactly where on the chip to focus our efforts if we want to be effective in creating a design that is safe, that is immune to single event upsets. Exactly what primitives on the chip present the greatest safety concern? We would want to first consider the type of FPGA that we're using. Whether you're using RADHARD, FLASH, Antifuse or SRAM based devices, some level of SEU protection must be designed in. The focus and extent to which you must do this will depend on the exact device type. Radiation hardened or rad hard devices offer the highest level of protection out of the box and are therefore widely used in applications that are safety critical. Rad hard devices are rendered highly resistant to typical radiation based errors using techniques that include physical shielding and insulation. Memory error detection and correction is usually available within these devices. Antifuse or flash based devices also offer some protection from radiation-induced errors. It's recommended that you take a few steps to protect antifuse or flash device registers and memory elements, as well as any IP or FSMs that comprise registers and memory. RADHARD, antifuse and flash logic cells and routing matrices are typically immune and do not need you to build additional SEU protection. What if you're using an SRAM based FPGA? SRAM devices are popular because they offer affordability, high performance and the highest capacities. SRAM FPGAs have logic cells, routing matrices and memories that need you to design in additional levels of SEU protection. Our particular concern is protection of configuration bits that can be highly susceptible to SEUs. IP and FSMs implemented on SRAM devices will contain memories, logic and routing and you'll therefore need to build in some protection when creating your design. For antifuse and flash devices that are prone to SEUs in their registers, use register-based triple modular redundancy, also referred to as local TMR, to triplicate the register and apply majority voter logic to the outputs. More on this in the next video on the topic of TMR. Finite state machines, FSMs, contain registers and so they are themselves susceptible to SEUs. These SEUs bit flip the FSM state register bits, causing the FSM to enter the wrong state. This in turn can result in one of two things, either incorrect outputs from the FSM being generated or the FSM entering an undefined state causing the FSM to lock up, that is, cease to operate. You can protect these FSMs by using simplified Premier software to implement a safe FSM, a safe case FSM, or having distance three error detection and correction. In a later video, safeguarding FSMs will explore the details of how to do this. For SRAM based FPGA designs, logic, FSMs, IP, RAMs and routing matrices are at risk from the effects of SEUs. The techniques previously discussed for FSM protection also apply to F SRAM devices, that is, safe and safe case FSMs and having three error detection and correction. To protect sets of combinatorial logic cells and configuration bits, we will use a form of redundancy known as distributed TMR. For global clocks, combinatorial logic cells, routing matrices and IOs, we will triplicate entire blocks using what is known as block TMR and FPGA IO replication. For memories, we'll apply block RAM TMR. We can also select special ECC RAM primitives automatically, that is, have synthesis automatically infer ECC RAMs when generating the design. For configuration RAMs, we can use a technique called duplicate with compare 
to create the necessary error flags to drive configuration RAM scrubbing. All of these methodologies will be described in detail in the videos that follow. No matter what device you're using, you will want to add the following items to your methodology for improving functional safety. First, when applying redundancy-based error mitigation techniques such as TMR, be sure to make direct connections on inputs and outputs to the voter. That way, the error-corrected output has less chance of being corrupted or being subject to skew. Direct voter input connections are created automatically by the simplified Premier software. Additionally, ensure that clocks are synchronized. Meta instabilities can occur if clocks that dr drive a single cone of logic have not been synchronized with each other. You can run a special simplified Premiere check to identify any such scenarios so that you can fix them. Also, take care to minimize clock skews on circuitry that drives blocks that have been triplicated. For example, if you're triplicating IP or large blocks using block TMR, be sure to synchronize all data inputs to the block to a single clock where possible. If you're inserting custom error mitigation circuitry or probes into your design, be sure that you tell the synthesis tool to preserve those nodes by putting special synthesis attributes on those nodes. Otherwise, you'll risk the circuitry or the node of interest being optimized away during the synthesis process. Using redundancy and other SEU mitigation strategies involve adding circuitry to the design, which in turn incurs some additional cost on the die. Safety may need to be traded off versus timing, throughput delays, and the cost impact. When verifying the design, you may also want to check that critical portions were indeed TMR'd or rendered safe exactly as you intended. Area trade-offs and the locations where TMR, duplicate with compare, safe FSM techniques, etc. were applied are reported by Simplify Premier to enable you to perform verification checks and the necessary trade-offs. When assessing the right SEU mitigation method to apply, you'll want to consider the following. First, the trade-off of reliability versus device area and performance and throughput. Secondly, the type of device, SRAM, antifuse, flash, all of these need protection. And the device type determines which specific internal FPGA primitives need the most level of protection. Finally, your desired style of error mitigation using FPGA synthesis to insert circuitry in support of user-specified error recovery versus having the software automatically create error recovery circuitry. An additional set of short videos are now available to elaborate on how to create error monitors and how to protect logic, registers, IP, FSMs, clock routing and IOs and memories in your specific design, piece by piece. Please feel free to view them. Thanks for listening.